living with Jesus, living with Jesus, living with Jesus every day. I'm living with Jesus, living with Jesus, living with Jesus every way. Now when you wake up in the morning, do you say a prayer to him? As your day gets filled with challenges, do you ask him for his strength? If you get to feeling lonely, do you reach out for his hand? If the answer is no, how's he ever going to be your friend? Start living with Jesus, living with Jesus, start living with Jesus every day. Start living with Jesus, living with Jesus. Living with Jesus in every way. Now he's the only one who will love you in a right and simple way. He's the only one who's always there, no matter what you say. He accepts you as you are right now. You don't have to change a thing. He's your saving grace and he surely wants to be your friend. Start living with Jesus. Living with Jesus. Start living with Jesus every day. Start living with Jesus. Living with Jesus. Start living with Jesus every day. Start living with Jesus every way. Every way. Good evening. And welcome to Calling All Christians. My name is Mike, and when you're watching this, it's going to be April 25th at about 11 in the morning. And I'm in Fall River, Massachusetts, down on South Main Street at a storefront called 264 South Main, which is called Gates of Praise. It's a little church down here that's been here for years. The, uh, f the founder's wife, pastor's here. He died in an accident a few years back. And he was uh, a great promoter for the homeless. And so the Lord guided me down here about a month and a half ago to uh, kind of help out. And since then it seems to be his will that I be here to help out, and I've been doing that for a while now, and things that seem, seem to be going real well. Of course, anytime you're going to do something with Jesus, when it's within His will, everything's going to go well. Um, people may not think it's for the well. Sometimes, even if it's inside His will, uh, people look at it and say, "Oh man, that's terrible," but. Nothing in Jesus' will is terrible. It can't be. He is uh, all love, and there's no way anything can be bad. It may be discipline for the p people around, but it won't be. Uh, it'll be discipline in love for their good, and that's the way He works. Um, so the things that are happening in the world today are all. You know, people say, well, this is all by design, the evil is doing this and blah, 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 you know. And it is. But this is all God's design. God the Father let his son come down here. And for the lost sheep of Israel and everyone else, that he created. So, we are all blessed for Jesus died on the cross and his blood was shed for all sinners. And that's us. Because <laughs> that's what we are. What happened to me, I had an experience 26 years ago that I didn't deserve. It was all through his will, his grace, and his love that changed my life. And now, 
in the last month and a half, he's kind of reactivated me in, into uh, going to be using me for something. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know that some good things, I think, are happening. And others that I've talked to seem that good things are happening. But even if bad did happen, it still would be as well. And uh, that's like the founder of the, uh, this church was, uh, he was killed in a motorcycle accident. And, but that was God's will. He's home in heaven with Jesus. And his job was done. And if you're seeing me, my job isn't done. And anyone else, their job isn't done. So that's what, that's what we do. Now, I've had this show, I did a show in Rhode Island called Cuckoo for Jesus, C-U-C-K-O-O, -O. and that just kind of means crazy for Jesus, which after I met him, I couldn't stop talking to everyone about him. And then you begin to realize that although people go to church and they, you know, they understand, you know, Jesus is Lord and, you know, whatnot, they, they don't seem to understand that you have to live with him every day but you have to pay very close attention to him every day and you don't have to do much he does the brunt of all the work you just have to be very observant as to what's happening around you and know that what's happening around you is controlled by him so if you see someone that needs help you should help them you need somebody to see somebody in trouble, you should help them. You need somebody hungry, you should help them. Now, those are basic things that are in the Bible too. In the New Testament, there's verses, I'm not going to quote them. You should read your Bible every day. You should know the verses. You should know them by heart. I should know them by heart, and I don't. I've read them, but I've got to start reading and writing them all down especially the ones that are his direct commands to us as to how we are to live our lives. For the Bible is just like we all have smartphones. Well, the Bible is Jesus' smartphone. And he is, he's not AT&T, although in a way he is, and uh, all the other different broadcast companies, because he's on top of all those, he's in control of all those anyway. But um, the people running them don't think so, but he really is. But he's, that smartphone is like, and, and there's a lot of good uses for a smartphone. Most of you already know that. You know, if you've got to get somewhere and you don't know that area, you can pump the address into your smartphone and it'll tell you. If you have a question about something you're cooking, you need to know how long it has to be cooked. You talk in a smartphone, it'll tell you how long. It'll give you other recipes, maybe even better than the one you have. If you're not feeling too well and you have some symptoms, you can pump them in, it'll tell you what your problem could be. Doesn't mean it is. You might say, call your doctor right away. <laughs> so there's some great uses. You know, somebody gets lost and they have a cell phone. They've found many, you know, lost hikers out in the wilderness through contact with their cell phone. It also has not so good purposes. People would call them evil purposes. Okay. It can track you wherever you're going. It controls you. It can control, if you let it, it can control your life. You can become a slave to that little four by three or five by three piece of equipment in your hand. And you see it sometimes. You see people walking around, they're just, they're not paying attention to the world, they're looking at what's inside the cell phone or what's being broadcast to them. And somebody controls that. And not always do they have your best interest at heart. The unfortunate ones is generations of children that will, that's all they'll know. 
when I grew up, and I'm at 76 now, you know, we went out and had fun. We went out in the woods. We went out in the fields. You know, we didn't have cell phones. All they had back there was regular phones. So if your mom and dad needed you and you were out in the woods, they weren't going to call you. So when you got home, you found out what happened or what they needed. I mean, if it was that big of an emergency, they'd go out in the woods and find you because they usually knew where you were at. Everybody knew everybody. Today, people have become more isolated. It's kind of sad to see. I don't think Jesus wants that either. He needs Christians, all Christians, to come together to be that body of Christ. Read 1 Corinthians in the New Testament and listen to what Paul's talking about. And you can see what's happening in the world today, in the churches. And if you don't think so, Try going to different churches. Some churches you would go to, they wouldn't even let you in the door. They're a Christian church, but they don't agree with your, you know, who you are or what you think, or they'll try to change you, or the, you know, they want you to join their, their church so they can get your money. And in the church circles, they call that sheep stealing. When churches try to get people from other churches to come to their church. That's not what church should be about. We had a sermon last week in this little church done by Rabbi Esther. Okay. She is the wife of the man that founded the church with her many years ago. A widow now. And she was spot on. Churches need to get out into the communities. I mean, I'm sitting in their Bible study room attached to the church, and I had a lady come in. I know her because I was out with a friend picking up the streets in a place called Corky Row in Fort River, Massachusetts. We'd go out every once a week. I'd go out other days during the week, but once a week, we'd put these shirts on and go out the door. And uh, we walk the streets and pick up the trash. Cans, bottles, cigarette butts, whatever's on the street. Now, if we went out the next day, it'd be a whole bunch more. Because people treat God's creation as a trash barrel. They're more interested in their own selfish needs. They don't do it deliberately or maliciously. Not all, they actually, probably none of them. They just think that's commonplace, throw it on the ground. If you happen to see a trash barrel, some might put it in a trash barrel that was provided. Other than that, it hits the street. Might give somebody a flat tire, but hey, you won't know that. And it makes your community look unkept, full of people that don't care about anything. And that's the truth. But anyway, I met this lady. And she came in here the other day, and I found out that she has a problem that somebody should help her with if they want it. And I believe it's church's responsibility to help. So I'm going to give her a call this coming, maybe tomorrow or the next week. Anyway, I will contact her and offer her. Offer. She doesn't have to take it. She has free will. A possible partial solution to her problem. And it's not about giving her money, because it's not about money. And we'll see if we can help her. And we've had some other people come in. And see, none of this is by chance. I mean, people just didn't walk by and happen to see what's happening here. We're at 264 South Main. Come on down. Fall River, Massachusetts, downtown. This is public broadcast. I'm here most all days from early morning to night, but I have to go in and out, so I leave a sign telling you when I'll be back. But I have, uh, I've got my phone number out there, because if you need, like I'd like to have a Bible study every single night. They have a Bible study on Wednesday nights, 
but they don't have anything on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. They have a service on Sunday, 1.30 in the afternoon. So if you'd like, stop down, and uh, we do some singing. Somebody reads the scripture. They're working on the Old Testament right now. And then uh, in the Bible study, she's working on the New Testament. And I've got some clips from both the services. I'm going to try to get into this one if I can. If I can't get it in this show, I'll get it in the next one. And then I send this to public broadcasts. And it airs on channel 95 at 11 a.m. in the morning on Sundays. I hear the church bells ringing. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? It's a Catholic church over here. St. Mary's, and uh, I don't know if that's from St. Mary's or, this is one of them. I used to hear those in Newport where I grew up. I think it's, what, what time is it? It's uh, uh, 6.01, so I must be letting people know. It used to be a time, you, you hear the church bells, you know it's a certain time. So they must still carry on that tradition up here. So it's around six o'clock, the church bells start ringing. I think they ring. We might hear them stop here in a little bit, so it must tell everybody that's what it does. They probably got them set on timers now. It used to be, so they had to pull the cords. There used to be signals in the uh, Europe that used them for warnings, and here in, here in America also. So, you know, I make the shirts and I have a pants and I have a hat. I wear this, this is my dress every day. I promote his name, because it's a name above all names, every single day, 24 hours a day, I sleep in it. So if I wake up and something's happening, I'm dressed ready to go. Well, gotta put the pants on, but I leave the shirt. I don't, I don't feel comfortable taking the shirt off. I can't anymore. And that's a good thing. I try to get others to wear it, but, oh, church bells just stop. I think we got, yeah, we got about five minutes on that one. Yeah. So that must be telling people here in Fall River at six o'clock. Let me read you some inspiration. Everybody should get inspiration every day, every single day. You could do that as you walk around in this world and I, whatever, you know, you may be going to work, riding in with a group of, you know, friends, or on the bus, or walking to work, and you'll pass somebody. You know, you could just say, God bless you. Have a great day. You know, I'm, I'm just a, a few words of cheer. Jesus would really appreciate that. Okay? Now, what I do is, I don't... I don't pick up, I just let the Lord pick it, so. And some people say this would be by chance or luck. Yeah. There is no chance and there is no luck with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There isn't. I always just thought there was, but after my experience in 2003, no longer. Okay, so this is going to be the one I read today. Ah. This is called Calvary, and we all know what Calvary was. It's where Jesus was crucified. Look at that. I've got about seven minutes and 56 seconds. This is a half hour show. I put a little bit of my original Christian music that the Lord has inspired me to write before it, and I have some trailers, some scrolling, where I give the uh, credits of you know, this is made for the glory of Jesus. And anything, you know, we have a Saturday afternoon movie from 2 to 3.30. If you're in Fall River, come on down. We have popcorn, soda, and we're at 264 South Main Street. Um, we do the service at 1.30 on Sundays. Um, or just come down for some Christian fellowship. Or if you'd like to have a Bible study, I'm gonna put my phone number in there. Give me a call. I don't care if I'm out somewhere. I'll say, hey, I can be at that store in a half hour. Come down, we'll read some of the Bible together. And I'll be there. All you gotta do is ask. What does the Bible say? Ask and you shall receive. Very simple. But you gotta take the time and the effort to ask. Okay? Here we go, Calvary. Now this is Jesus.
talking to two women in 1932. That's their claim. The Spirit of the Lord. They did not see him, but they, well, I don't know. They may have seen him, um, but definitely this is his words. That's what their claim is. Now, I wasn't there, so I can't say. I can tell you I've heard his voice 26 years ago in a little camp where my wife and I lived in. I did not see him, but I felt his presence. And if you experience that, you are blessed beyond anything in your life that you could ever experience. Okay. From the death of my body on the cross, as from the shedding of husks in seed life, springs that new life, which is my gift to every man who will accept it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Die with me to self, to the human life, and then you will know the rapturous joy of Easter resurrection. So we've just, we've just gone through Easter. And I hope everybody in every Christian church around the world really understands what he's talking about there. Die with him of self. That is very, 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 very difficult to do. You need his help daily to do that. And a very strong faith. A risen life so glad and free can be yours. Praise God. Mary left home and kindred friends all that Easter morning in her search for me, and not until the Mary had been followed by the glad, triumphant rapture of her Rabboni was her search over. Mary went to the tomb. She saw two people in white in the tomb. Jesus' body was not there, and they put it in burials there, they put a napkin across the face. The napkin was folded, which in Jewish tradition is, you're not finished yet. But Jesus was not there. And she asked him, where is he? Or they asked, so who do you see? Well, he's not here. So she, she was like very concerned, where did he go? She saw him die. Then, she heard Mary, and she knew the voice, because she had heard the voice for a long time. And her soul leaped with joy, because she knew it was him. But he didn't look the same. She had looked at him, she thought he was a gardener, and she had seen him a lot of times, but he didn't look the same. Okay, so with each of you, Man speaks to you, too, of a buried Christ. Search until you meet me face to face, and my tender uttering of your name awakens your glad Rabboni. Praise God. So he's saying he's still here, folks. I know I experienced that at true. By his will, he changed my life. I was not worthy of any of that. I was, I wasn't a terrible person. In a lot of ways, I was an absolute terrible person. But I didn't see myself as that until you realize that he's, he's real. And then the Bible is 100% the truth. Then you realize how bad a sinner you really are. And you have to change. And you try, so you, sometimes you... You, you make mistakes, but the Spirit brings you back and keeps bringing you back until you learn what your life should be. And then from Galatians 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Praise be the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And about 217. And then I'll put this, the song in. I did that through, uh, I use Sony software to, uh, to make it, and then I have to render. It takes about four hours to render. It's a long time to render. And, um, but it comes out, and then I put it up on YouTube, and I put it over to Twitter. 
I and BitChute. I have a. I had an account on Facebook. I got to reopen so I can get back to Facebook. But I, I had two accounts and I couldn't tell which one because people were saying, "Oh, I want to follow you. I know I want to be, know this." And when I'd write them back, then no one ever got back, so I couldn't figure out which one I was answering, which account. But uh, so listen, um, I do this every Sunday. But this is Thursday. I'm doing this. I gotta do it a little earlier because I get rushed on Thursday. If there's a mistake or a problem, then I have a, I have a bigger problem. But I also, uh, I'm down here. I got 264 South Main Street across from the Family Dollar on uh, in Fall River, Mass. And hopefully, I'll put up some uh, pictures and stuff of the store and the service and and uh, the Bible study. Again, the phone number is there. If you want to have a Bible study on a Monday night, give me a call. I'll come down or I'll be here, you come down, we'll read the Bible together. I do this with a friend in Providence most every night. And uh, and then tonight, after I finish this, I gotta go back to my wife's apartment and I have a Bible study with two ladies that live in her building from seven to eight. I think we're reading, I don't know if it's Job, I think we just finished Job. And we're in the next book. Okay, so read the Bible every day. Even if you pick it up and just read one line out of a song. Okay, try to encourage other Christians or just pe lift up another soul in somebody with encouragement every day if you can. Try to. You can do it. It's very easy to do. You just have to take the time to do it. Oh, there it is. Okay, we put that on snooze, pause. Oh, I gotta cancel that. Dismiss. <laughs> I'm still learning how to use these smartphones. They're smarter than me. And I'm not very smart. Well, that's bad. Yeah, they're pretty smart. Okay, have a great day. May the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless your life. May his will transform your life into following him. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Peace, love, and joy. From Jesus, all right, Jesus, sitting right here saying this to you. And he's right there standing next to you saying it to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. Love me 
true I did